Hello, welcome to Pro Tips number 50, where today we're joined again by Jacob, who's going to talk more about custom OIDs. Um, and I'm going to let him introduce the topic and give you a bit more context on what we'll be covering today. Jacob? Cool. Thanks, Esmin. Uh, so, yes, today, um, SNMP, C is for network devices, um, mainly, um, and other things. Um, but out of the box, sometimes things don't scan all the way. You don't get all the details that you need. Uh, sometimes devices will not have a serial number or a firmware um, number, things that you, uh, you might want to get. So I'm going to go over a feature in LandSweeper uh, called uh, OID, Custom OID Scanning. And the neat thing about this um, is that that will allow you to load uh, what's called uh, MIB files and uh, look for those OIDs. And what are the OIDs and MIB files? That's a little bit complicated, but uh, basically the um, SNMP works with what's called a MIB framework. Um, it's a protocol that uh, is a hierarchical tree um, that returns device information. Uh, generally, it conforms to standards, which LandSweeper uses. Uh, and sometimes there are settings or OIDs that are custom uh, and not standard. So they won't show up uh, as, as expected. So how do we get those? Well, um, first thing is I have a brother uh, printer that fortunately has the firmware in the description. So the description is pulled from uh, SNMP. And I don't have that as a field. So right here, um, I don't have that. So how do we get that? Well, you can generally, you can do what's called an SNMP walk, um, or you can Google for the MIB file. In this case, I Googled for the brother MIB file, uh, which is a custom file made by brother uh, to get more vendor specific information. Yeah, and a lot of times the manufacturers will have a support center where you'll be able to get these MIP files. So your best place is probably to head over to the manufacturer first or try and find the manufacturer link first. Um, yes. I've also found things like on random forums and things like that that you can try. Um, one thing to, to mention, I mean, if you're watching, you can already see it, that we're in uh, LandSweeper on-prem. But so the configuration at the moment is only available in LandSweeper on-prem. Um, we'll show later on on how you can report on it. Um, and the data is available. Once you've scanned it, it is available in, in, in uh, LandSuper sites. But to configure it and scan it, you'll have to go to LandSuper on-prem as Jacob is showing. Thank you, Esmond. Yes. So right here, you, you download a MIB browser. And uh, LandSweeper has a MIB browser, actually. A MIB importer where you can choose a file. And there's the brother MIB file. The brother MIB file, which will allow you to browse for the entry that you need. Now in this situation, and you can also search right here, that will tell you if you search for a page, uh, pages sent, I mean, it's pages printed, uh, which by the way is, is an entry where uh, LandSweeper will actually tell you the pages printed. Yeah, there's a there's a number that is of those standard. that you can see on the on the asset page that we get by default. So yes. like things like the 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 model manufacturer uh, for printers is like 
printed pages. Sometimes there's a difference between like color printed pages and black and white, but that kind of depends on your printer. Some printers support that, others don't, but we have like a, a small list of default OIDs that we try and scan with every single device. But this, like, like you said, if you want to get like a, a version, firmware version, usually that's different for every manufacturer. So we don't have that as a default. So that's where you yes. have to do the, what you're doing basically. Yes. So this is awesome. You can search for a particular um, OID. Uh, however, there's a whole bunch in this particular case from Brother. So at this point, I use a MIB browser that will actually connect to the device and do what's called an SMP walk or SNMP walk. Uh, so right here, um, I have the IP address of my printer and I will load that MIB file that I got from brother. And then I will do an SNMP walk. And this will traverse and get more information than you ever wanted to know. So any... but basically just, it goes to every single like data row and connects to the, well, checks with the device what it has for that specific data point. So whereas in Landsweeper, you can see like, you can see description and like in the, in the OID or the, the mid browser that we have in Landsweeper, you'll see like, if you click on one, you'll see like description and it gives you some information on what is in there. Um, but it won't actually give you an example of what kind of data is in there. So sometimes it can be difficult to, for example, to find uh, a system version or something because you might have multiple entries in your MIP file that have something like sysver or like sysver admin or, or whatever. Right. Like they, their naming is not the best <laughs> in the descriptions. So it can be useful to have one of these SNMP uh, walk tools that you can use to actually check what data is in each in each OID, and that way you're sure that you're kind of selecting the right one, basically. Absolutely. So we have, we're still walking. We're at 10,000, 11,000 records. So we're gonna stop. We probably have enough. Um, and at this point, um, again, we're gonna have the same issue with a whole lot of uh, IDs to look through. Fortunately, in this case, uh, I know that the description has the firmware in there, in the description, but I need it uh, in an actual field for reporting purposes. So fortunately, I know that it's Z. So if I search, for Z, I will get one entry. So their firmware, the firmware for Brother is just like a single letter, basically? Yes, in okay. this case. It's a yes. quite it's interesting, well, it can be quite confusing if you don't know how their versioning works, but. <laughs> yeah, well, fortunately, fortunately, you can Google that, or fortunately, yeah. Landsweeper puts it in the description is very lucky for me um, but this this is the procedure that you go through to get these custom fields that you want um, so we will yes so I, I copied it right here and we will do we will enter this into the custom OID scanning targets. And just while you're doing this, I'll add that if you use the land sweeper, the built-in land sweeper, um, like, uh, like a MIP tree, um, or you upload your MIP file into land sweeper and use that view and find it there, you can, there's a, there's, there are buttons there to like immediately add it to a target. So 
you don't always have to go through this entire process, but if you use like a MIP walking tool and you find the OID there, then this would be the way to do it. But if you can find it in the, the MIP library or the, the MIP importer, then you can select it straight from there and add it to a target. Thank you, Esvin. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add a target. And in this case, I want it to scan, um, apply this search or lookup for just a printer. And if you wanted to get more granular, you could put a brother. So it automatically has that manufacturer uh, based on what is, has been scanned in the inventory, which is very yeah. nice. That is, um, it is kind of sensitive to that. So you'll have to make sure that, um, well, there, there are some instances where manufacturing name is not always consistently stored by devices. So that's one thing you might have to take into account, but as long as it's consistent, then it's fine to use a manufacturer and model field. Thank you. Uh, so right here we is the mapped data we are going to put the ID that we found. So this will, uh, when it matches a brother printer, scan for this OID to get the firmware. Okay, uh, once the uh, scan is complete, uh, you can access on-prem or Lens Super Sites. Um, in this case, if you're interested in on-prem, uh, you can read the pro tip blog. I have uh, some SQL code and some uh, reports available from the blog. Um, I'm going to show you um, cloud or sites, Lens Super Sites. And from here, um, we have the reporting is, is pretty easy. Uh, and we have a custom OID report, uh, which will be available uh, for you. Uh, in your report section. Um, so you can click the custom OID audit. And in this case, we have a whole bunch of uh, custom OIDs with the data system version. And this will show you every OID and value and label and that you have uh, available to scan or have set up scanned in custom OIDs. And if you want, you can obviously, you'll, you'll be able to duplicate this report and adjust it or filter it based on whatever you need. Um, this is more just like a, an overall, like a, a general overview. Uh, a template, I guess, is, is the best way to see it. Uh, you duplicate this, you, you edit it, you filter on whatever kind of device you want or if you have a specific OID. Here it's like called key, um, but you'll see there, you see under the key column that those are all the OIDs. So if you want to filter on a specific OID, if you want to filter on specific data, model, manufacturer, whatever, you know, you can duplicate and adjust the report as needed. So a use case for this uh, that is very common and important uh, in, in, in securing your environment is uh, printers in particular uh, are vulnerable to a lot of attacks and a lot of uh, takeover uh, by criminals and, and hackers. So you can use this um, in say a hospital system, there be 600 uh, label printers, mobile label printers, and it is very difficult to know the firmware versions um, of all the different models and makes. Um, so it's uh, you can easily report on all the firmware models across your organization to assist with uh, projects 
um, that you have uh, firmware that the security team or the printer team um, to then upgrade all of the firmware and make sure that everything is compliant and at the latest version. So this will, you can make a report where the, um, the data for the key is not the firmware version that, uh, that you expect or that you are upgrading to. And that will ensure compliance, um, which is very important for security purposes. Yeah, and I mean, you can do that with many different things. Um, yes. We've seen people do it, like when you get to things like switches uh, or routers, there's usually SNMP data on like CPU usage, even cache usage. Um, so if, if you're even, and one that is that I, I imagine is used often is temperature, uh, maybe not specifically <laughs> yes. for, for switches, but if you have a temperature controlled environment, and it's critical that you kind of, well, not monitor, but keep an eye on temperature at least. Um, it's a very interesting one as well. Um, often Absolutely. You'll, you'll even have temperature control uh, devices that uh, you, can, you can query with SNMP. So all that stuff is, is super interesting to take a look at, see if you can find the MIP files or at least an OID, throw it in there, report, it, report on it as, as Jacob has shown. Um, so with that, I think we're, we're, we've shown everything around custom OIDs. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you, Jacob, for, for showing everything and preparing everything. And you, we'll Ezra. catch you next time.